TC, take note of the date. It's the 3rd of February. It is. And if next year, I should ask the question of when will it be easier for me to park in the morning? The right answer will be on or about February 3rd. Okay. I thought the exact same thing. I pulled into the parking lot this morning and I said, where is everybody? Is it like, are we done? Is January done? Cause, cause and what are we referring to? We, we work in, plo- in close proximity to a gym. A very fancy gym. Right. And every January, when we come back after winter break, right. the parking lot is insane. <laughs> right. Insane in the morning. And it takes a while. And I thought it was going to happen last week. But it did not happen last week. I was still getting packed out last week. This morning, two cars. But they're done. Two cars. Right. So so that bump is over of people looking to get healthier, so fitter, drop a few. <laughs> uh, February 3rd is the date. I bring it up for the following reason, because I need to get more fit and I need to drop a few. And I am oh. contemplating the purchase of a smartwatch. Oh, to count your steps and such? To, to, to count everything. Just to, to just to, keep, you, keep I track of you. Right. Uh, Lindsey Krauss wrote a piece for the New York Times that is kind of changing my mind. She's a writer and producer in opinion who writes on gender, ambition, and power. Look at my social media right now, and you will see the piece to which I refer. I ditched my smartwatch, and I don't regret it. Lindsay, thank you so much for being here. I mean, you take fitness seriously, right? In your bio line that accompanies your work at the Times, it notes that, quote, her best marathon time is two hours and 53 minutes. So for you, fitness is at a different level than it is for me, but nevertheless, you thought you needed a smartwatch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I resisted getting one for a long time. And then um, I decided that I needed one. I needed data and something that did more than just tell the time um, if I was ever going to get faster and achieve my goals. And that was the funny thing is that it did. But obviously, it came with a lot of other unexpected consequences that I wrote about in the piece. In other words, it made you faster. Did it necessarily make you healthier? Well, I think that's that's the nuance that I was talking about there. I think... um, what it made me do is almost outsource my idea of what the goal was at some point I realized the goal became um well I outsourced that idea to the device um the goal almost became the numbers themselves rather than what they represented which was um you know actual fitness or actual health um and that was when I realized I was kind of hooked because numbers change constantly and you're getting this feedback that almost almost makes you addicted um and that to me was um, a little scary because, you know, exercise is also one of those, it, it's sort of, a, um, you know, you, uh, it, it, it's hormones, et cetera, that kind of um, make you feel good and keep you coming back for more. But I found that with the device, that was not a good thing. Um, whereas with exercise, it kind of is. So I, I know what it's like to be able to count my steps, but just, just how much data is available to someone who's wearing a smartwatch? Oh my gosh. Um, at this point, it's it's things, I mean, this is what really surprised me. It was things that I didn't even really realize that my body did. I mean, I talk about in the piece, like lactic thresholds, VO2 max, heart rate variability. I mean, these are all things that I was aware of, but I really thought you could only measure when you were inside of a lab. Um, and suddenly I have access to this information all the time. Um, like literally every minute, sometimes it would change throughout the day. So you could just keep checking this. And um, it's like, you're, you feel the same the whole time. So it's like these numbers are somehow playing with your mind and making you think that your health is different than, you know, what you might, what your intuition might tell you. And I think that was what was, what started to, um, to scare me, to almost make me think instead of getting healthier in some ways, mentally, I was, I was getting a little sick. Right. In other words, you, you find yourself going down a rabbit hole. It's, it's like a smartphone in that there's a temptation of just spending your entire life looking yeah. at information, maybe not data per se, but information available to you on a smartphone. And what I took away from the piece was beware because it's very easy to go down similar rabbit holes of data on your health metrics. Yep, exactly. It's like, um, I mean, in the same way, it, it started to seem to me like the way that, you know, if you're bored and sitting on your couch and you look at Instagram and you posted something, sometimes you'll just click refresh. Um, and whether it's um, the likes on your own post or just constantly flipping through that feed, that was what I started to see with the smartwatch. But the scary thing in this case is that it wasn't a photo that I posted or something that I said, but my actual body. Um, and that seemed to be 
uh, that seemed to take almost this uh, this fixation on numbers to another level because technically I should know if something is good or not. Like, um, you know, if I'm healthy, if I'm hungry, um, uh, if I'm tired, I should know that. I shouldn't be waiting for a device to tell me. And um, that was what got kind of scary sometimes. I didn't realize if a workout went well um, until my watch told me, which had never happened before and was an experience I don't want to go back to. Someone from academia who you interviewed for the piece said, quote, these technologies have, in essence, drugified even exercise. What does that mean? Yeah, um, so that was... Dr. Anna Lemke, um, who's a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford. And she wrote an amazing book um, called Dopamine Nation, Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence. And she was talking about, so she, basically she studies addiction and addiction behavior and how that's changing in an era where we can get feedback constantly, have access to numbers constantly, um, uh, and all of these, like this constant feedback from these devices that we hook ourselves to, um, it's addictive and it keeps us coming back. And so she was talking about how um, it extends not only, or this phenomenon extends not only from the smartwatch to other things like Peloton, almost to the gamification um, of exercise and that gamification does serve as a drug it, that constant feedback it's designed in many ways to um, to commandeer our our attention um, and to keep us coming back um, and again not only to um, to record our behavior but to influence it and um, and that's when I think it starts and that's what she says um, that's when it starts to become um, akin to a drug I mean she calls a smartphone um, almost analogous to an IV drip. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting uh, way of thinking about it, that you know it's constantly um, constantly infusing you with, with feedback. Well, um, I get that numbers. feeling on, on Peloton, even with the limited metrics that they're giving me in terms of my cadence, et cetera. Uh, and it's, I'm finding it more and more difficult to remain asocial on Peloton because people mm -hmm. are constantly wanting to high five me and so forth. Now I'm afraid that people can figure out my identity because I didn't do a good job when I first picked out that mm -hmm. screen name. Um, so what's the alternative? Because you say, if you're thinking it might be time for a break from the numbers, I propose a challenge for the year ahead. Try taking your cues from your body instead of a device. What do you mean by that? Well, I think this is where it's really interesting. I mean, I definitely used Instagram. I used Strava. I used um, kind of the social elements. And I used a watch to get faster. Um, so it's not to say that these devices don't work. I mean, I love the community. I was training to try to qualify for the Olympic marathon trials, and, and I failed. Um, but in the meantime, I got faster than I ever thought I was going to get in, in my life, really, um, especially not in my age. I'm in my mid-30s. Um, and there were, it connected me with a cohort of other, particularly women who had the same goal. So it's not to say that these, that you need to never use one of these devices, but at the same time, I think a device is helpful until suddenly it's not. And what you need to do as, you know, a responsible user, I guess, is, or a thoughtful user or an intentional user is recognize when you tip that line. Um, and I mean, the answer is moderation. And that's where the trick is, is that I don't think these devices are are engineered um, for moderation um, and for moderate use. And so um, you need to really be careful and impose that on yourself. Um, and so for me, that meant, um, you know, really just cutting it out for a lot. I haven't used one for, for months now. Um, and it was kind of like a gradual phasing out. And it's not to say I'll never use one again. Um, like maybe I will if I have a goal. But I think this idea of the temptation to constantly monitor ourselves, like particularly the message that these devices aren't for protection anymore. They're for, uh, sorry, they're not for performance anymore. They're for protection. I think that's when they start to market themselves as essential and almost like a part of your life. And that's what I think, um, you know, if you want to maintain control over your own health, especially mentally, not just physically, that's when you want to probably take a break. A final question. Must it be all or nothing? I mean, can, can I have one and, and wear it only on certain days? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, you could use one on certain days and I'd be curious actually um, what kind of effects that might have. But I think that's exactly what I mean when I say like a moderate use, like whether it's, um, you know, to use a, to use one of these devices very intentionally to achieve a goal. Um, Sure, that's great. But I think 
it's it's when you um, almost mindlessly uh, outsource your conception of your own health to the device. That's when I think it stops being uh, the healthy thing that it's promoted to be. Lindsay, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it and I wish you good things. Thanks. It was great to, talk, great to chat. Lindsay Krauss is a writer and producer and opinion for the New York Times who writes on gender ambition and power. I ditch my smartwatch is in all my social media right now. I'll be back right after this. 